Hey guys, my name is Brad. I'm a video editor, photographer, and filmmaker. And today I'm going to show you how to brand your YouTube channel in Final Cut Pro using the YouTube Booster plugin from LenoFX. The team over at LenoFX invited me to try out the YouTube Booster plugin, and I'm going to show you some of what the plugin can do for you. I'm going to show you how to create the various elements every YouTube channel needs, like an opener, end board, subscribe button, certain overlays, call to action pop-ups, lower thirds, and more. I'm also going to give you a few workflow tips to help you edit your videos faster once you've created all the branding elements for your channel. Let's get into it. I'm going to use my channel, Brad and Donna, as an example to create a sample branding pack, which once created can be used on all future videos without needing to recreate anything. With the plugin already installed, let's start by creating a new library and I'll call it YouTube Branding. I'll create a new project as well, and I'll also call that YouTube Branding. We'll start by creating an opener. There are a bunch of different options here, but I'll go with this one. Simply drag and drop it onto your timeline. If I play it back, notice how these shapes animate in, reveal a transparent alpha channel with the logo, and then transition back to an alpha channel. The first thing I would do here is add a music track and time the opener according to that. For the sake of getting to the point of this tutorial, I've brought the music in already, and I've cut together a short piece to use for the opener. I have two markers here, marking the in and out points of the music for when the beat comes in and when it ends. This is what it sounds like. So I want the point in the opener where the shapes completely cover the screen to happen on the starting beat of the music. That's right about here. I'll make a marker there and sync that to the first marker on my music track. Next, I want to line up the second time that the shapes completely cover the screen to the end of the music. I'll put my playhead at that exact point and I'll extend the opener until the shapes fill the screen at that exact point and I'll add another marker. In the gap between markers, I'd like to add some footage and since the channel is about my wife Donna and me, let's add a shot of me and then we'll cut on the beat to the shot of Donna. That looks good. Let's put the playhead over one of these shots and select the opener. I'll go over to my inspector, and if you scroll down here, you can see that I can change a ton of different parameters for this opener plugin. Let's go back up to the drop zone, and this is what you'll use for your logo. I've already imported our logo into the library, so I can simply drag and drop it onto the clip well. I'll adjust the scale to make it a little bit bigger, right about there. I can also change the colors of the shapes by clicking on the colors and adjusting them to match your branding colors. Now, the logo doesn't really stand out, but we can fix that. Let's scroll down to the background overlay section, and I'll turn the background on. I'll change the color to black, and I'll drop the opacity to effectively darken those two shots in the middle. I'll add a little bit of a blur, and I'll remove the noise. Now, if you bring footage to each end of the opener to sync up to each marker, you can transition from your pre-opener footage into the opener, and then out again into the body of your video, like this. Being on the post, so... Let's go! We just finished up our little gondola trip and it... You see how easy it is to customize. That's one of the things I love about this plugin pack. Next, let's create an end screen. As with the openers, you have a few different options here for end screens. I like the look of end screen 11, so I'll just drag and drop that onto my timeline. The first thing I want to do is set the duration to 15 seconds, so I can select the end screen, hit Ctrl D, type 15, 0, 0, and hit return. You'll notice that this end screen builds in and looks like this. You'll see how the screen gets filled with a solid color, and at the exact moment that it does, I can create a marker. Let's go in to change a few other parameters to really customize the look of this end screen. The first thing I'll change is the channel profile image, which is controlled here by drop zone 1. I've already imported it, and I can just drag and drop it onto the clip well. I'll adjust the content scale to get it looking just right. I want to keep the subscribe text as it is here. You can change the font if you want to, but I'm happy with the way that this looks. I'll go in here and edit our Instagram handle to brad.and.donna, and then we don't use Facebook, so I'll scroll down and just disable that. I'll scroll down further to text 4, and I'll edit that to say keep watching. In this drop zone, you could add the thumbnail of a video that you want to drive your audience to, but I would personally disable this because I can use YouTube's end screen to show a specific video. 
Doing it this way allows you to change the video you want to direct viewers to as opposed to only showing one video that you can't change later. If you're doing a series of videos and there's a logical next video in the series, then you can add the thumbnail in here. Before I play it back, let's copy our theme music from the intro by alt dragging the clip and creating an outro piece of music. I'll extend the end of the track and find the beat to start on. Right about there. And then I'll add another marker. Let's sync those markers up, trim the start of the music, fade it in, and trim the end fade out as well. I want to emphasize that this is the end of the video, so I'll go over to my effects panel to the EQ section and I'll add a channel EQ to the music track. If I go over to the inspector window and click on presets, I can go down to EQ tools and select the phone filter notch preset. And this is what the end screen looks and sounds like. By now, you'll know how to customize all the different parameters in these templates like color, scale, text, replacing media and drop zones, and more. So I'm going to go a little bit faster through some of the other great templates in this plugin pack, starting with titles and lower thirds. I've been using the Title 2 template to create titles for each section of this video, and I added a solid white color with a reduced opacity in the background overlay section to customize this effect. It's a nice way to break the video up into different sections, but these titles can also be used in as many different ways as your imagination allows. I also used this lower third earlier when I introduced myself, and as always, I went into the inspector window and customized the parameters to match the branding of my channel. Let's go over some of the other really useful overlays in this YouTube Booster Pack. You might want to remind your audience to subscribe to your channel during the video, and there are a bunch of different ways to do it, from the subtle pop-up, to a lower third bar that pops up from the bottom and reminds your audience to subscribe and to turn on notifications. You might want to let your audience know what song you're using in your edit, and there's a template for that too. You can also add a simple hashtag that might spark conversation on social media. You can encourage viewers to leave a comment and ask you a question. If they do, they might ask, where can I get this amazing YouTube Booster plugin? And you could simply answer them by saying, there's a download link in the description below. As you can see, there's a huge library of different templates to choose from all of which are highly customizable and you can easily brand your YouTube channel with all of these elements. You might have another pressing question. Do I need to recreate these overlays every time I create a new video? And the simple answer would be no. I'm going to show you how you can easily import all of these elements into each new video that you create. The first thing you need to do is put the opener, the end screen and all the overlays you've created onto one timeline. I've named this one branding elements and I've copied everything into this timeline. If I scroll through here, you can see I have my opener, end screen, title template, lower third, subscribe buttons, and everything else that I've created in this video. One thing I want to do is to quickly create a compound clip for the opener. Let's lift these clips from the primary storyline by hitting Command Alt in the up arrow. I'll put my playhead on the first marker and select the opener template, the clips underneath, and the music, and hit Alt G to create a compound clip. I'll add a mark at my playhead to match the marker that I had here originally, and then I'll scroll to the end where my marker was and I'll add a new marker on the compound clip. This is that frame where the shapes completely fill the screen. Now I have my in and out points for the opener and I can move it around as if it was one clip and not a bunch of separate elements. This YouTube branding library is what you'll use every time you create new videos, so make sure you've saved it somewhere that is easy to access. Let's assume we're starting a new video, so I'll go over to File, New, Library, and save my new video. Next, I'll go back into my YouTube branding library and I'll look for the branding elements project. I can drag and drop this into the event of the new project and Final Cut Pro will ask me if I want to copy this into the library of the new video and I'll click OK. If I open up that project, all my templates are there ready for me to reuse in my next video. If you made it this far into the video, thanks for watching. The YouTube Booster plugin is a really powerful one and it's great to use whether you're using it on your own YouTube channel or whether you're using it for clients. If you want to purchase the plugin, there will be links in the description down below. Thanks again for watching. See ya.